Hello and welcome to Veterinary Instrumentation's latest episode of Under the Skin. In this episode, we are focusing on the subcutaneous ureteral bypass device, or SUB. We'll discuss what a SUB is, how it is managed, and common troubleshooting steps for patients with these devices. So, let's go under the skin. The ureters are fibromuscular structures which transport urine from the renal pelvis to the urinary bladder. The ureteral lumen is between 0.4 and 2.5 millimetres in diameter, depending on the species. This means that ureteral obstructions due to uroliths, or less commonly strictures, are common, especially in cats. When a ureteral obstruction occurs, the patient develops post-renal acute kidney injury and rapid relief of the obstruction is required to restore renal function. A subcutaneous ureteral bypass diverts the flow of urine around the obstructed ureter, relieving pressure on the affected kidney and restoring renal function. The sub consists of a subcutaneous flushing swirl port a pigtail nephrostomy catheter and a cystostomy catheter. The nephrostomy catheter is inserted into the renal pelvis. The cystostomy catheter is inserted into the urinary bladder and the two are linked by the subcutaneous swirl port. The swirl port is sutured to the outer side of the ventral abdominal wall, allowing the veterinary surgeon or veterinary nurse to access the port subcutaneously for ongoing maintenance. Subcutaneous ureteral bypasses require regular management to maintain patency and minimise complications, including mineralisation within the catheters, infection or obstruction. Every three to six months, the device is flushed under ultrasound guidance using the sub flushing kit. The flushing kit contains an atraumatic non-coring Huber needle, which prevents damage to the subcutaneous port, a T-connector and three-way tap, two 2.5 milliliter syringes for urine sample collection, a syringe of 0.9% saline for flushing the device, and a tetrasodium EDTA solution to prevent device obstruction. Sub-maintenance may be performed by veterinary surgeons or veterinary nurses acting under their direction. The patient is positioned and the site is aseptically prepared. Wearing sterile gloves, the veterinary nurse assembles the Huber needle, T-connector, three-way tap, saline syringe and empty syringe. The Huber needle is inserted through the skin into the centre of the subcutaneous swirl port and advanced until it touches the metal plate at the base of the port. A urine sample is collected from the device and submitted for urine analysis, including bacterial culture. Under ultrasound guidance, pulses of saline, totalling one to two millimetres, are administered through the sub-device. The renal pelvis is examined whilst the device is flushed. The pelvis should not visibly dilate. If dilation is seen, this may indicate obstruction in the sub-device. Bubbles may be seen as the saline is instilled. The process is repeated whilst the urinary bladder is visualised. Movement of saline or urinary sediment during flushing indicates a patent cystostomy catheter. The saline is withdrawn back into the syringe and discarded. The tetrasodium EDTA T flow lock solution is attached to the three-way tap and one to two millilitres is instilled into the sub-device. Holding the port steady, the Huber needle and associated consumables are withdrawn from the port and discarded. Complications associated with sub-devices include obstruction, infection, mineralization and blood clots within the device, though they are minimized with regular flushing procedures. If complications are encountered during sub-maintenance, the following troubleshooting steps should be considered. In the case of renal pelvic distension during flushing, pause flushing for several seconds until it resolves. If it does not resolve, discontinue the flushing procedure. 
If the sub device cannot be flushed, do not place excessive force on the syringe, as this can cause the catheter to dislodge from the swirl port, causing urine leakage. Instead, discontinue the flushing procedure. If the device is partially flushing, but mineralization is noted, follow the Norfolk Vet Products T Flow Lock protocol for mineralization. In the event of infection, this should be treated appropriately depending on the patient's clinical signs and bacterial culture results. Persistent infections can be managed using the Norfolk Vet Products T Flow Lock protocol for infection. For further information on the subcutaneous ureteral bypass device and flushing kit, please visit our website or contact our specialist technical support team. Join our online community by following our social media pages, keeping up to date with the latest releases of training and education material, as well as company updates.